Hey what's up everyone, CTN Technology News here and today I'm going to be doing something really exciting. I'm actually going to be doing a review of iOS 8 for older devices. So basically, iOS 8 is Apple's very newest mobile operating system. It actually just released today and basically I'm just going to be going over what's new in it and I'm going to be doing it more from an older devices perspective. So if you're actually upgrading to iOS 8 versus if you're getting like the new iPhone 6 or iPhone 6 Plus which already have iOS 8 pre-installed. So as you can already see, the inner interface for iOS 8 is actually very similar to iOS 7. Last year the interface got a huge update with you know, an entirely new design, but this time it's basically just looks the same as iOS 7 when you're interacting with it and when you're actually tapping on different apps and things. It's going to really run almost identically to the iOS 7. Now there are just a couple small differences, for instance when you double tap the home button this time round, you'll actually now see a list of recent contacts at the top above all of your recently used apps and if you actually tap on one of them, them, you actually get the option to message them, FaceTime them, or call them on the phone uh, if you actually have that ability available to you. So that is, I think, a pretty neat feature, and I think it is one that a lot of people will find pretty useful. But now let me start talking about what's new on an app-by-app -app basis. So the first app I'll be talking about is Messages. Apple's definitely put some refinements into Messages this time around, and you know, there are a couple minor features that people really have been wanting. Their first thing that they've added is the actual ability to put a Do Not Disturb notice on any individual conversation. So basically, you select the conversation, and then you turn Do Not Disturb off or on. It's actually really simple, but this is actually really handy, especially if you're in like a group chat that keeps on buzzing and you want to turn it off this is really helpful if you're on a phone or if you're even if you're on it using a tablet this is a very helpful feature another really cool thing that Apple's added is the ability to really quickly send either voice or video messages you can just either tap the little microphone symbol or the camera symbol and you'll have the option to send either a video you've already taken a video that you take just now or an audio message and so that can make you know sending messages a lot easier and quicker so you know that's also a pretty nice update now what's really cool about these voice and video messages is the fact that they will actually self-destruct after a certain amount of time so as not to take up too much space on your device. And then also, if you're sending them to someone else, they'll actually get them on their lock screen, especially if you're just sending audio, they'll actually see a little audio graphic on their lock screen and they can just listen to it by holding their phone or even their tablet up to their ear and iOS will automatically know what they want to do. Now another app that Apple's definitely improved is Mail. So actually now if you go into the Mail app, there are some new abilities that you have. For instance, when you're looking at your messages, there are new abilities for what you can do with them. If you actually swipe right on an individual message, you'll have the ability to mark it as unread really quickly. If you, now, if you actually swipe this message to the left gently, then you'll actually get an option to either uh, see more uh, information about it, to either flag it or to archive it. And then if you actually swipe all the way to the left, it will automatically archive the message. It's a really quick and simple way of dealing with, uh, uh, with, with different new messages, especially ones that you don't want to actually bother to read. Now, actually, when you're in a message, there's new options for multitasking. You can actually swipe the message to the bottom and open up a new app and copy, or not a new app, but a new message and copy stuff over from the first message to the second message really easily. So that's really cool. Also, the last feature that Apple's added is Apple will actually uh, keep the attachment in a separate application called MailDrop so it doesn't actually take up space within the email. It's actually a really unique feature and it seems pretty cool. Now, interestingly, one of the biggest new things about iOS 8 isn't actually with regards to a single app. App, it's actually with regards to the entire operating system. iOS 8 actually has a whole bunch of new continuity options to where you could like have your phone, your iPad, and your Mac all interacting with each other. So basically, you know, one way this could work is if your iPhone's downstairs and you need to answer a phone call, you can actually do that on your Mac. Also, you've got new abilities to airdrop between your iOS device, like your iPhone or iPad and your Mac, so that's an easy way to transfer files and to share stuff really quickly between devices. Now, iOS 8 has also gotten a big update when it comes to keyboards. If you're actually typing something like in a message or in your notes or anywhere basically, um, there's a new feature called Quick Type which will actually predict the word you're going to say next. So as you can see, I've actually got a note open right now and it's already predicted that I might want to start my message with the, I, or I'm. So if I say the, it could now come up with three new words. And so, like, let's just say I wanted to type a message. Let's just say I was writing to a friend and I was saying, like, uh, let's go and see a movie tonight. Um, now it'll actually come up with uh, let's go and then uh, now I have to type in and, and, um, and basically, yeah, we've got C now, uh, we got 
and now if I type in A, we've got movie, it'll, it'll actually predict words as you're typing them, and this actually works a lot better than I actually expected, to be honest. And this is a really cool feature, especially if you are on a phone or some device that you don't want to actually spend a really long time typing on. This is sort of Apple's answer to the Android swipe keyboard, and it doesn't work quite as well, but one thing that is quite nice is that Apple is actually now allowing you to download third-party keyboards for your iOS device, so you can actually get different third-party keyboards that add additional functionality, which is a feature that's really, really nice. Now, Safari is also slightly improved in iOS 8. If you actually go to Safari, if you're on an iPad, you can now actually get a bird's-eye view of all the tabs you have open, which is a really, really cool feature. It allows you to sort of see everything you have open all at once, and it makes it a lot easier to navigate between tabs. Also now, in iOS 8, there's an ability to make tabs private on a per-tab basis, so you can have one tab private, and you can have a ton, a ton of other that are more public, so, you know, that, that's quite a nice feature. Now, also, when you actually are searching, Apple's added the ability to search by default with DuckGoGo, which is a search engine that basically Apple's using to sort of throw mud at Google in a certain sense, because they're trying to get away from users using Google as their default search engine, and it's not really that big a deal, because you can easily still search with Google, but it's just a small thing that Apple's doing to sort of decrease their reliance on Google even further. Now another app that actually Apple's improved a fair bit is the camera app. So if you go into here now, there are some new options. Um, first, you can now create have a time-lapse video, and sadly I can't actually show you the camera running because I'm actually doing this via a screen recording and it won't actually work, but as you can see, I've actually got time-lapse showing uh, right under the record button. You can now uh, take all kinds of different things. And another thing that's actually quite cool is that there's actually a timer. So as you can see uh, right above the record button, you can now set your device to actually take a picture after three seconds or after 10 seconds to give you time to like set your device up and then actually go ahead and get into a shot, which again, that's a pretty nice feature that actually in some ways I'm surprised that Apple hasn't added before now. Now, not on iPad, which I'm showing you here, but on some other versions like for older iPhones, you now get the ability to use burst mode and panorama mode in the camera, which is quite cool. And so that's actually a really nice feature that Apple's finally giving to their older iPhones, some more continuity there. Now Siri has also been improved in iOS 8. Now you can actually say, hey Siri, and Siri will actually reply to you. It's sort of like the OK Google feature on Google Now. iOS 8 also does have interactive notifications, so if you get a message, you can actually reply to that message right in your notifications bar without having to open up the Messages app and specifically go there and type in your message. That's another thing that's sort of nice because you don't actually have to worry about switching from app to app since Apple still hasn't added multitasking. Now there are three new things coming to the App Store with iOS 8. Now developers actually have the option to sell you a bundle of apps, so you know you have, you have the ability to buy several apps with just one buy button. Now also developers can now upload preview videos for their apps, which is kind of nice. Um, they can also um, basically make it so you get more of a, a sense of what the game actually runs like, or the app, or whatever you're trying to buy from the App Store. You can now get more of a sense of the app based on the videos. And then also, is all, Apple's also giving you the ability to try out new beta apps with their new test flight service, which is, uh, you know, kind of cool as well. So just a couple minor improvements to the App Store, nothing major, but, you know, it's, it's sort of cool nonetheless. Now, on devices that actually have Touch ID, you can now set it up to where third-party apps will be able to use that feature, which before Apple has never done. Now anyways, iOS 8 is actually going to be a really great upgrade, whether you have an older device or if you're buying into Apple with the new iPhone 6 or iPhone 6 Plus. Either way, it's going to be a great operating system to run your device on. I mean, it's not it's not as revolutionary upgrade as iOS 7 was, and to be honest, I would still say it's slightly behind Android when it comes to certain things. But with that said, Apple's definitely making improvements, and you know, that's always welcome, because uh, you know, it, it's always nice to see that Apple is sort of adding some of the features that their users are wanting, so you know, that, that's, that's it's quite nice. But anyways, I'm definitely curious to know what you think of iOS 8, so you know, give me your opinions on this new operating system in the comments below. Please be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And that wraps it up for this video, so anyways, I will see you next time.